This is Bob Payne, Chief Investment Strategist here at Payne Capital Management with this week's market update. This week on the Street of Dreams, we had good news and we had bad news. So I'm going to start with the good news. Retail sales showed solid gains in both March and April. Now the bad news. Two retail giants missed their first quarter earnings marks, causing recession-fearing investors to sell their stocks aggressively. The S&P dropped 3% and has now fallen 18.7% from its recent January 3rd all-time record high. A slide of 20%, which it touched intraday on Friday before bouncing back, signifies a bear market. The Dow Jones Industrial Average declined 2.9%, its eighth consecutive week of losses, matching its longest losing streak since 1932. The Nasdaq, composite already in a bear market, slid another 3.8% and is now down 28% from its early January peak. This week, Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell spoke about the need to keep raising interest rates, while Target and Walmart not only reported earnings that disappointed, but on their earnings call, they suggested U.S. shoppers are finally feeling the impact of rising prices. Ultimately, this week, there is no place to hide, as even previously strong performers seem to finally capitulate. The Dow Jones Transportation Average dropped 6.7% on concerns over a shipping recession after having declined only 12% entering the week. But the big drops in previous winters could be good news. It means that investors are finally capitulating and bringing the market closer to that elusive bottom. Rising interest rates, sky-high inflation, lackluster economic growth, pressure on corporate profit margins. See, it isn't hard to come up with reasons to be bearish on the stock market right now. And then to see the S&P down 20% for only a minute on Friday, well, it can make investors full of doom and gloom. But there are reasons to be optimistic. For starters, a recession isn't a done deal. Sky-high inflation and Federal Reserve hawkish moves to bring it down, plus the long-running supply chain and COVID-19 drags on growth are the best-known forces that risk tipping the U.S. and global economies into contraction. On the other hand, Americans have significant savings from the past two years that could help cushion the blow of these rising prices, as well as an ultra-strong job market, which is another positive for households. And while interest rates are certainly going up, they remain low by historical standards. So the optimist view is the market is setting the stage for a potential rebound. Measures of investor sentiment, some of the lowest I've seen in history, fund flows and positioning have become significantly more bearish and negative as the market is sold off. These contrarian indicators historically have been followed by rebounds. The past seven weeks, man, have they been painful. But the upshot is a more attractive starting point for stock investors today. The S&P 500 now trades at just 16.6 12-month forward earnings. That's down from almost 22 times at the start of the year and only a touch above the long-run average. The entry into a bear market has been a good pivot point in the past. The S&P 500 has been higher one month later 83% of the time since 1950, according to the Dow Jones market data, with an average gain of 3.7%. And a year after entering a bear market, returns have been positive 75% of the time, averaging close to 17%. Now, it's impossible to know in real time when there's an actual bottom. And a near-term bounce may be followed by further declines. But it isn't all bad out there. And with stocks pricing in a near worst-case scenario, it wouldn't take a lot of good news to get this market rising once again. Hey, my son Ryan and I, we have 68 years of combined industry experience of building low cost tax-efficient, goal-based portfolios. For your free evaluation, all you have to do is text or call 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Or just simply call 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-PLAN-NYC. This is Bob Payne. I'm the Chief Investment Strategist here at Payne Capital Management.